I'm Philip Noble, and I work in Houston, Texas. Uh, I work in an orthopedic department and an institute of research. So I'm a, a PhD researcher. Um, I have a team of people um, who work on different research problems. Um, I have a particular interest in the hip, um, which I've had for many years. I uh, do research and I uh, design implants for a living. I invent things for a living and do research out of interest. When I first started in orthopedics many years ago, in orthopedic research, I um, it was just one of those traditional things that people worked with first, I guess, when engineers got involved. My, um, a lot of my uh, postgraduate work was on hips and bones, so working on hips and stresses uh, was sort of the, the uh, place that everyone started their knowledge of how engineers can contribute to understanding the body. So I guess that's how I got involved, first of all. But when I moved to the United States, um, I, I have always done a lot of inventing. So I had all these inventions, so, and some of those inventions were to do with the hip, so it kind of grew from there. I wanted to be a plastic surgeon for most of my life. Um, and for all sorts of reasons, I decided to do something different right at the end when, when you had to commit to university. So, but I've, I've always wanted to invent things. I mean, life is full of mistakes. It's just, it's just, um, it's just, it's just um, uh, taking all those risks and um, kind of moving on and uh, playing the odds well. I mean, if it's not full of mistakes, I mean, it's pretty, it's, it just means you're not doing anything, I guess. When I was a kid in uh, university, I was interested in a lot of things. So I was doing, I was one of these people who um, did two courses at the same time, which was against the rules. And you were expelled if you got found out. So I, I did two courses at the same time, which was cool, which was great. Um, one thing that came out of that, I, I guess, was I was offered a scholarship to Cambridge, believe it or not. And um, the school that I was in had had a professor at one time, had two professors actually, who went on to go to Cambridge, to, to just leave Australia and go to Cambridge from the University of Melbourne. And they became very prominent here. And I was offered a scholarship uh, at the end of my college to come here and to do postgrad, And uh, for all sorts of reasons I turned that down. I've got some new inventions that I've just been thinking about for a, the longest time in knee replacement and, and hips and how hips and knees work and, and how you would capitalize on that actually on, and, and improving joint function and, I see it going in several different ways. I mean, one one way is is there are just so many parts of it that are ununderstood, unsystematized. You know, it's like it's like settling a town and you've got an organized street or block with a railway station and houses, but if you look behind the houses, it just sort of peters out into the plain and. That's, civilization ends here. So knowledge in hip preservation to me is kind of like that. So there are all these things to do with instability, dysplasia, um, cartilage, cartilage injury, uh, who are candidates and who aren't, what are the causes of bad outcomes, I mean do we really understand? There have been lots of them, but, but there is, I'll come back to it, but, but, but kind of the elephant in the room is always going to be cartilage. It's always going to be, you know, it's one thing to evaluate cartilage, which is a huge breakthrough. So, for example, MRI imaging, degeneric, um, 
um, sequences in MRI so that we can tell cartilage help. I mean that that is a that is a, a just a, a, a monumental breakthrough. But a little bit like the genome, you know, just understanding what the, the, that there is a deficit, what the deficit is, and it's addressed doesn't mean we can fix it. So it's everyone. We're, we're all human, so everyone sort of thinks the next big piece, like imaging cartilage, will will well the, the, that'll be solved. Now we've got cartilage done. Well, no, we've just we just know where it lives. We don't know what to do about it. We don't know, we don't know how to reverse the pathology. So. So yes, <clears throat> and of course stem cells have the, some potential there, but so that imaging of cartilage health, I mean that, that is a huge breakthrough on a path, but the problem that's unsolved is, as usual, we're talking about joint preservation. We're not talking about being able to fix or reverse what's already um, damaged. So. That, that's the piece that we really have to attack. And everyone is, but it's very challenging in the hip. I've been looking at hips for a very long time, 40 plus years, literally, and it's just endlessly fascinating to me. I mean, I, I, I only understand a little bit of it. I mean, knees to me are more fascinating even, probably. I mean, I don't know, that's kind of a, even. And I'm just learning things about it all the time. I mean, it, I could learn about it for 50 more years, it'd be good. Oh, it's endlessly fascinating. It's so, it's so complicated. It's, it, it's absolutely ingenious and amazing. So, and I mean, the more we learn about tissues and how they work and stuff, the more incredible it is. Um, it's just amazing. I mean, who would have guessed? <laughs>